Hello everybody, this is Arnie Stedman here again with another unboxing. Um, I had uh, just uh, finished up one a little bit ago and I forgot to do this one until now, but um, I had also picked up this pack along with my Yu-Gi-Oh! deck box collection, which you can see there. It's still shiny as hell. Uh, it I picked up it in my local card shop as well, and it's actually for D&D. &D. Uh, it's a nice... Spellbook cards, the arcane set. I had saw these there and um, I had decided that I was going to get these. Let me just lower this a bit there. So I saw these at the store and I asked around if they had uh, the druid and the cleric and paladin and such. And sadly they didn't, so I'm going to pick those up another time. But the nice thing is I was at least able to get the... Arcane set. One moment, I believe my camera's off set. There we go. There, so. D&D Spellbook cards, Arcane set, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, done by... That is Gale Force 9. And GF, Gale Force 9 trademark. Yada, 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 intended for 12 years and older. But it is licensed by Wizards of the Coast, so they are able to sell it. So just another one that has spellbooks, spellbook cards, spellbook cards. And then the back, which is spellbook cards arcane set. Contains 231 durable laminated cards for all wizard, warlock, and sorcerer cantrips and spells from level 1 to 9. A perfect reference tool for spellcasters of every type. This is actually quite heavy for a box of this size. Like it's about it's about the size of my hand, give or take. A little bit smaller. I could still grip it easily and just pick it up. But it's got some weight to it. Which uh surprised me a bit. Either way, let's open this up now. I like the little details of all the different kinda arcane spells and such that it has on there. So right from get go, just nice laminated packages. Laminated cards and packages. There we go. And there's the cards. So, with this, you can see the cards have all the different stuff. There's, well, there's the one cantrip. Uh, it has also what kind of level spell it is right underneath. Just third level, what kind of spell, conjuration cantrips, blah, blah, blah. Has the casting times, the components required, the duration, range, at the higher level, spell casting, and also all the... And also basically just the um, description of the spell. So basically what it does and what damage and effects it would have. Um, and along the back, the nice thing is they have these nice little numbers on them, which actually help with defining, like, say you separate into decks of t 10 different decks, you can see, like, okay, there's the third level spells, the ninth level, and so on and so forth. So we're going to... Open up the 0 to 3. This is, looks to be about halfway at 3. So, 0 to half 3 spells. So, the cantrips are fair level spells so far. That's about all we got so far. There we go. So, yeah, nice little laminate cards. Basically, quite thick actually. A lot thicker than I thought they'd be, unless it's too stuck together. There we go. That's why it seemed thicker. Okay. So yeah, they're they're going to take a little bit to get apart at first, but other than that, they're not too bad. So let me just grab. There we go. Oh, cantrip, cantrip, cantrip. That's first level, first level. Cantrip. Cantrip. There we go. So now we got the cantrip spells. So we got the basic acid splash, blade ward, Chill Touch, Dancing Lights, Eldritch Blast, Firebolt, Friends, Light, Mage Hand, oh you can really tell they're stuck together, Mending, Message, Minor Illusion, Poison Spray, Prestige, bleh, Prestige, Tijidation. I'm always horrible at saying that my my uh my players for Friday campaign always bug me about that. Uh Ray of Frost, 
Shocking Grass, and True Strike. There we go. So that's all the cantrips for basically sorcerers, wizards, and warlocks. So we'll just put those over there for now. Now next one, we're going to go to the first levels. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There should be some breaks somewhere. Second level, second level. There, so as you can see, yep, yeah, just like usual, the first levels are a bit more than there is for cantrips. So we got the basic alarm, armor of Agathus, which is stuck to the arms of Hadar, burning hands, charm person, chromatic orb, color spray, comprehend languages, detect magic, disguise self, Expedi Expeditious Retreat, I believe? I haven't said that one in a long time. No, which was also attached to False Life. There's Featherfall, Find Familiar, which I believe is attached to somebody. Yep, there we go. Fog Cloud, Grease, Hellish Rebuke, Hex, Identify, Illusionary script, jump, long strider, mage armor, <clears throat> magic missile, protection from good and evil, ray of sickness, shield, silent image, sleep, Tasha's hideous laughter, tensor's flowing disc, thunder wave. Unseen Servant, Witch Bolt, all the different ones. So let's take a quick look at, say, good old familiar Burning Hands, which should be, there we go, right there. Take a quick look at what it says. So Burning Hands, first level, Evocation, cast time, one action, range, 15 feet, self cone, components, vocal and symmetric, I believe, which would be, uh, they have to actually have, Free hands to do that. Duration instantaneous, so it's a basically instant spell. And would have all the different kind of details about it. About how you would shoot the spell and what kind of stuff. The deck save. Uh, the damage that would happen. What happens on save or fail. Uh, the fact that it can ignite stuff that is flammable in the area. So you have to watch out for that. Then, okay, we'll take a look at Witch Bolt. Which bolt actually gives us the materials? A twig from a tree that has been struck by lightning. So basically you're going to need that if you don't have an arcane focus. If you want to use, say, witch bolt as a spell. So there's the first level spells. So next, we'll do the second levels. It's basically like a good old booster pack of cards for your D&D sessions. So we got Alter. Oh, that's actually, yeah, second level. Alter Self, Arcane Lock, Blindness and Deafness, Blur, Cloud Dagger, Continual Flame, Crown Madness, Darkness, Dark Vision, Detect Thoughts, Enhance Ability, Enlarge and Reduce, Enthrall, Flaming Sphere, Gentle Repose, Gust of Wind, Hold Person, Visibility, Knocked, Levitate, Locate Object, Magic Mouth, Magic Weapon, Melf Acid Arrow, Mirror Image, Misty Step, Nistful's Magic Aura, Phantasmal Force, Rave Enfeeblement, Rope Trick, Scorching Ray, one of my favorite ones whenever I'm playing a wizard. Sea Invisibility, Shatter, Spider Climb, Suggestion, and Web. Nice little bout of second level spells. So as you can tell, uh, there is about roughly the same amount of spells for first and second. Um, give or take. 
Uh, third level, I know that there is quite a bit more. So we're going to actually have to open the second pack because as you can tell, there is third levels here as well. I do not know how many third levels are in this pack with the other cards. Oh, I love to have that Draven Axe now. It makes opening so much easier. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like we only have about four or five fair lulls along with it. So, basic ones, just the usual, like Anime Dead, Bestow Curse, Yada yada yada, Glyph of Warding, Haste, just the usual third level spells, Lightning Bolt, that's always a fun one to use in certain situations. So there we go, we got the third levels. Now I know I'm not going through all the spells now because there is a bit of a rush. Because I don't want to make this video too long for you guys, I just wanted to kind of show off different ways that they could work for you and like, that they have, yeah they have all the spells in there and it's a nice little tool for actually on the table. Here we go, we got all the 4th level spells, the Arcane Eye, Conjure Minor Elementals, Everett's Black Tentacles, Hallucinatory Terrain, stuff like that. So there's our 4th level spells, which is actually quite a bit smaller than the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd level spells that we have seen so far. So next we have the 5th level spells, just the basic ones again. Uh, anything that you'd find in the normal player's handbook. Oh, I nearly knocked you over. I need to get that off my pant leg. So yeah, just the basic ones. Animate objects. Contact our plane. Hold monster. Pass wall. Seeming. Wall of stone. Just all the basic fifth level spells that you'd find for wizard, sorcerer, or warlock. Now... As you can tell, those are also a bit smaller than the first, second, and third. There's quite a bit. Uh, as you go up in levels for spells, there starts to become less and less of that spell. As you can slowly tell. Next is six levels. So we got like Arcane Gate, Contingency, Eye Bite, Guards and Wards, Mass Suggestion, program, Programmed Illusion, Trucing, and Wall of Ice. Stuff like that. So there's a Wall of Stone, Wall of Ice. Uh, wall of Ice, I don't remember the difference between that, between that and Wall of Stone. Okay, so next, we've got a 7th level deck, which will actually be nice and helpful for anybody that actually gets to that high for spell slots and such. So we got like Firestorm, Mir Mirage Arcane, Prismatic Spray... So yeah, there's quite a few details on something like Prismatic Spray, which is like, oh, you roll a d8, determine what color effects it, blah, blah, blah. So basically, if you roll a 1, well, have fun with the 10d6 acid damage of red. Don't know why red would be acid. That would seem like green, but then green's poison. Or, oh, sorry. I read wrong. I am horrible. Acid is orange. I can read. I swear I can. So yeah, basically just a bunch of stuff. Um, even though I play online with my group currently, I feel like these would help me as well because I can just kind of keep them off to the side for whatever spells my group has. That way I can just go through deck really quick and be like, okay, so you're using teleport. There's teleport and read it over, see what they need or what they can or can't do with it instead of them trying to search through the book or whatever they have written down on their character sheets. It makes it a little bit easier. So as you can tell also the seven levels are quite small when it comes to how many there are for the deck. Finally we've got the eight level like anti-magic field, clone, glibness, Maze, Mind Blank, Power Word Stun, Telepathy, just basic ones like that as well. Nice back to them along with it. And all of them are numbered on the back one, zero through nine, which is nice. It helps you keep track of everything. Basically, what's what and such. And now finally, we've got the ninth level. So Astral Projection, Foresight, Imprisonment, Meteor Swarm. 
I had a friend that once used me your storm. Nearly killed the whole party. He kind of messed up. Shape change, time stop. That is one that is a bit strange. And then finally, the most broken spell I ever have come across and I kind of hate how it is. See, another thing is also this cards will if you if it doesn't have enough room for all of it, like this one wish, you can create a number of other effects. It even tells you what page to go look on. I don't know which book that would be. I believe probably 288 if it is saying wish. Probably the player's hand guide you can read what under effects are or unless the DMG for the DM himself or any other uh, kind of spellish or character books that there are for D&D. So there we go. We have the cantrips. Level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now the 9 is the smallest one. As usual, the 9s are very small set of group uh, spells and most powerful, but definitely the hardest to either come by if you're trying to find scrolls or even just use them. But... These cards are quite useful for if you want to actually just keep them as a little bit of uh, upkeep to make sure that you don't screw up any spells or you want to just like have a deck of your whole spell books so that way you can just go across it and basically you can find the spell effects like say you have up to third level spell slots as a wizard you're going to have at least oh probably a good 20 spells so having all 20 cards in one pile by themselves would actually help you quite a bit for if you want to keep track of all that. So, I'm starting to run out of hand room here, but there we go. Got them all there as one from bottom to top. We have at the bottom the like zero level spells or cantrips, which are basically easy enough. Just cast it any modes notice. And at the very top is our level nines. And as you can tell, there's quite a few. Well, and like I said, at the back of the box was 230, 231 cards. So quite a few, quite a few, for if um, if push comes to shove with your party, along with anything else that you need to do. So put those away now. Uh, maybe I can get this out. Just one moment. There we go. So I've got that little piece out from the middle, so I could just put the cards all right there. So I believe that they should fit just like that. No, they do not. So, okay, so maybe I should have left that barrier in there. They won't fit there either. Whoops. Okay, so while I'm doing that, I guess we'll just talk a little bit. Um, so just like I mentioned, there is a group I play with on Fridays. We live stream it on Twitch. Uh, usually if you if you follow me on Twitter at OnyxDemon, you can find out when or what or where you can come and watch these um, Twitch live streams of our campaign. We have a campaign going on currently called uh, Midnight Blood if you wish to join us for that. Uh, we have about nine different players. Uh, not everybody shows up always, but um, tonight there is uh, quite a bit bigger RP session. Uh, the group had recently come across a troubled pack of doppelgangers who were being enslaved by a black dragon and the group wants to free them. So there's going to be quite a bit of planning and they're getting to their first big city this session. So they're going to basically be playing for a dragon fight and how to save the doppelgangers and quite a few other things along with RPing around the city, trying to find what's going on there. So if you want to check that out, uh, I will leave a link down in the description of my Twitter, so that way I can tweet when we are getting started and where you can watch on Twitch. Um, I can also leave two links to Twitch accounts that we usually stream on. There's two, uh, usually either Saint Diablo 6234 go follow him on Twitch. He actually streams quite regularly, and he's a really good friend of mine, known for about 10 years. And then there is also Black Fox. I know there is Black Fox 234, I believe it is, uh, for Twitch. Uh, I met him through Diablo. He's a really good guy as well. Uh, he started streaming more regularly. He's also got to YouTube. Both of them do. So, quick shout out to both of them. St. Diablo 6234 and Fox204. Go follow them on Twitch and also YouTube. They make quite a few videos and stream. Fox is getting slowly back into it. And I hope you guys will all enjoy and join us this 
tonight around 7 p.m. Central by the time this is uploaded. Uh, it should be, by the time this is uploaded, it should be about 3.30 p.m. Central. So then we're starting around 7, 7.30 p.m. Central, and we'll be playing until 1.30 to 2 in the morning. So I hope you all enjoy if you come join us and watching the stream. And I will see you guys in the next video.